quest to find out how to cook the perfect ribeye steak. And in today's video, we're working with a 24 ounce dry aged ribeye steak that I dry aged myself. Video will be up here for 49 days in umami bags. We're gonna keep it super simple in the interest of finding out the best way to cook a ribeye. So today, nothing but salt and pepper. All right, first off, a nice thick layer of Morton kosher salt. Going pretty heavy because this is a really thick piece of meat. Two inches. And I think I actually will go on the third side because it's such a big piece of meat. Definitely want to make sure we get salt all the way through this, especially since we're keeping it simple and not using any of my favorite steak rubs. Definitely want to make sure we get good flavor on this baby. So lots of good salt and pepper. I'm using coarse ground, a little bit coarser ground restaurant style black pepper. Throwing this guy in a food saver bag, we're going to sous vide him at 125 degrees for about three hours. Once this baby's up to 125 internal in a few hours, we're going to head out to the Weber kettle where I've cooked up something extra special to finish this guy today. Ready for this? It's time to sear us a steak. Let's get going. All right, everybody, it's time to sear our salt and pepper sous vide steak. We're gonna sear this baby. This griddle is actually at 775 degrees probably 800 by the time I'm throwing this on because it's still climbing. So we're gonna get our steak on here. Let it finish, 60 seconds per side. And to make sure we get maximum contact, using a 10 inch cast iron skillet to press down. Now don't y'all worry about this here ribeye, this is for another cook, another video. Hope you watch it. I'm just counting off a minute in my head, so it may or may not be precise. Let's see what kind of sear we got on that first side, on our 800 degree griddle. That looks like some crust to me, y'all. Nothing but salt and pepper. And I wiped off as much of the pepper as I could so that we didn't have any pepper burning. This was at 115 when I put it on the grill. So it came out of the sous vide at 125 and uh, it had cooled off about 10 degrees by the time we're searing it here. So we should not, certainly not get over 130 on this with just going 60 seconds on both sides and I'm also gonna do the bottom to get a nice sear on the bottom. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, let's do the bottom. All right, let's call that good. Let's let this baby rest and have a taste test. All right, this baby has rested for a long time. Let's cut in and give her a taste. Just do a cross section right across the middle of this ribeye. And I'll give you a look at this beautiful wall-to-wall -wall pink Great sear on this baby. Here's the cap right here and the main part of the ribeye starting. You can recognize that, but that wall-to-wall -wall pink is absolutely gorgeous. Let's take a piece right out of the middle of this ribeye. Remember, this was salt and pepper only. Sous vide for three hours at 125 and then finished on that awesome hot steel plate. Here's the piece I'm trying. Good crust on it. I'm actually gonna cut that in half lengthwise just to give me a little more manageable bite. Oh, and it is falling apart. That dry aged beef is so tender. Let's give this a try. Wow. That is melt in your mouth. Super simple with just the salt and pepper. It's not crunchy, but again, I did let these rest for quite a while. But there's nothing, that sear is not leathery. It didn't dry things out, even though we stuck them on a 700 degree 
steel plate north of 700 degrees. It didn't do anything to uh, ruin the exterior of that stake. If anything, we could have gone longer with it. Wow. That is steakhouse quality. That was simple. It was easy. I have a knockoff cheap sous vide circulator. It's called a Strata. I bought it a couple of Black Fridays ago on a great deal. It was about 60 bucks. Thing has lasted me for a couple of years now, no problems. Um, I've got the cheapest food saver that Walmart sold five or six years ago. That thing is still running for me. All you need, a uh, cheap, easy setup to do an awesome steak cook sous vide and then finish it on your grill. You don't have to have a steel plate. You could have done that in a cast iron skillet. You can do it right over the open flame if you want. But I wanted to see what 700 degrees of steel would do to a ribeye. It didn't put a hard crust on it. It didn't make it crunchy. But uh, it does give it a nice, firm exterior texture. It does the nice blackening, that caramelization on that beef, the flavor of that. Um, it's just amazing. It's outstanding. I love it. Let me try a piece of that rib cap, the Spinalis. Beautiful red, salty and peppery. Awesome color. There's the sear. Mm. Wow. Definitely more sear texture on that piece. It was fantastic. It was an awesome steak. Now, I don't know if you noticed throughout the video or not, but I was actually working on two other cooks at the same time, doing the same thing with a couple of other ribeyes with a little bit of a twist. One of them, I put some bacon in the sous vide bag and cooked it in bacon before I seared it. The other one I didn't sous vide. I put it raw right on a 750 degree griddle. Those videos are coming soon. I hope you'll check those out as well, and I'll do a taste test comparison in those with the steak I did tonight. All three steaks are done, but I'm splitting this up into three different videos to give it uh, its own treatment. Hope you'll watch them. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time on Texas 2.5. Go cook a ribeye.